right, let's continue. I think we're going to be visiting them. Hey, Saturn's moons. You guys are hanging out here outside the rings. You're not brave like Pan. Here's Mimas and Enceladus. I hope I'm saying these right. Mimas, known for resembling the Death Star because of the large Herschel crater. I see that crater. By the way, notice how when you zoom in with your trigger, the stars in the background fade to black. I like that. That's a nice little effect. It really focuses both the viewpoint and your attention on the thing that you're zooming in on. Enceladus, a very bright moon with volcanoes of ice at the South Pole, liquid water near the surface. Volcanoes of ice. There's so much water in the solar system. I didn't know it was all hanging out here. That is so cool. Is that the volcanoes of ice down on the bottom there making that blue light? Mimas, additional facts. Mimas has a slightly ellipsoidal shape and is possibly the smallest object to have enough gravity to make itself mostly round. It is mostly round. It's only 400 kilometers across. I guess if you were any smaller than that, you would be an asteroid and you would be all rugged shaped. Discovered three years after the first Star Wars film was released and is almost three times larger than the Death Star in that film. So that, that actually is a moon. Enceladus, geologically active, surfaces regularly crack and is internally heated by tidal forces from Saturn and Dion. Where are you, Dion? Dion, are you messing with Enceladus? You guys should be friends. Enceladus' subsurface, Ocean, is a prime target in the search for life. Makes sense. It's protected under there. Material ejected from cryovolcanoes either fall back to the surface as snow or escape and contribute to Saturn's faint E-ring. Is that the E-ring, the one right close up to us here? And snow? It has snow! A moon of Saturn has snow. I didn't think anything except Earth had snow. That is so cool. And it's actually like water snow. That is so cool. It's like a giant snowy moon. All right. Okay, let's keep going through these moons. Tethys and Dion are next. Tethys, mostly made of water ice. More water ice. Like Mimas, also has giant impact crater. Where's your impact crater? Can we spin around you? No, the spin around function doesn't work in this part. That makes sense. Dion, bright wispy ice cliffs up to several kilometers high formed by tectonics. Very cool. So it has giant ice cliffs. There's so much ice here. So much ice doing things that ice doesn't even do on our planet. They have ice volcanoes and ice cliffs that are kilometers high and, and a surface made entirely of ice. There's so much ice. And those rings are made of ice too. Everything here is ice has more mass than all other smaller moons in the solar system combined. Tethys. You, you are relatively large. The surface is bright and reflective because it is constantly hit by material in the E-ring. That must be that outermost ring there. So it's like water landing on it and reflecting light. Other than craters, the surface is smooth and featureless. However, up close, the icy ground has a complex structure with lots of holes in it. I can kind of see those holes, yeah. I see what you're talking about. Dion also has more mass than all known moons smaller than itself combined. You too? What about Tethys? Maybe they're not counting Tethys? I don't know. Two other smaller moons, Helene and Polydeuces, share the same orbit at 60 degrees ahead and behind Dion. This is similar to Tethys and its two co-orbital moons, Telesto and Calypso. So it actually has two friends that are in the same orbit, and they all orbit around Saturn in, at the same speed together, so that they never meet, because they're always like on different sides of Saturn. That is pretty cool. Has an exosphere of molecular oxygen! So many oxygen atmospheres. Mercury had one, and Dion had one. I think there was another moon that had one. That's pretty cool. All right. Go on to the next moons. Rhea and Titan. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, Titan is big. 
All right. Rhea, like Dion, also has wispy ice cliffs, obviously. Larger. You're a big, big moon made of ice. Titan, the largest of Saturn's moons, is the only known moon with a substantial atmosphere, and it has liquid methane lakes. So there aren't a lot of moons that have lakes on them. This is, I believe, the only one. So that's pretty cool, Titan. You're a good moon. Is Titan really yellow like this? I wonder, oh, is that because, is there sulfur in its atmosphere or what? Tell, tell me more. It's not gonna tell me anymore. There's no text written for this part. That's fine, as you can see. All right, let's continue. Goodbye, Saturn's moons. It was fun. Goodbye, Saturn. Maybe I can get a look at its North Pole now? Oh, I can't see the hexagonal whatever. That's fine. There they go. Those moons look small from a distance. Look at this. They're just big. I'm passing right... Oh, hi, Uranus. You are sideways. Oh. We're visiting one of your little moons. Oh, wait, you're not a moon. What are you? Known as the largest centaur, which is an asteroid that orbits the sun between Jupiter and Neptune. It also has the smallest ring system ever discovered. Look at you! You've got rings, and you're like the size of a poodle. That's adorable. Charic Chariclo? Chariclo? How do you say that? I don't even know. But you're a cute, tiny little thing. Look at this. I can lean around it and look at it. I didn't know about centaurs. Centaurs are pretty cool. I didn't even know there were any asteroids out here. This has got to be a cold planet, though. Just wandering around out here in the middle of nowhere. Farther away than Saturn. Rings are partially made of water ice. Maybe it got them from Saturn. The bright inner ring is 7 kilometers wide. The outer one is 3 kilometers wide. Rings are very reflective, and this causes Chariclo to appear 40% brighter when the rings face Earth. That's cool. So sometimes you appear dark, and sometimes you appear much brighter. That's very cool. Chariclo was discovered in 1997, but the rings were not detected until 2014. This is a very, very recent discovery. In our own solar system. We're like looking at other galaxies and there was this guy just hiding out here in our own solar system. There are an estimated 44,000 centaurs with diameters larger than one kilometer. That is a lot of asteroids that I didn't know exist. Several centaurs have icy tails, which makes them comets. And any centaur that breaks orbit towards the sun is expected to become a comet. Okay, so apparently there is an asteroid belt between Saturn and Uranus made out of thousands of comets. That is badass. There are so many cool things to learn. All right, let's keep going. Bye, Trey Glow. It was nice meeting you. Enjoy your rings. So little. Okay, time for Uranus. 50,000 kilometers. You're pretty big. Not as big as Saturn, but you're big. Uranus, one of two ice giants, has the coldest atmosphere in the solar system. It is tilted on its side. I can see that. And is 19 AU from the sun. Has a volume of 63 Earths and 27 known moons. Not quite as many as Jupiter and Saturn, but still a lot of moons. Bright enough to be barely visible to the naked eye in a dark night sky, and has an ongoing battle over which of Uranus's poles is its north pole due to its tilt. So the poles are actually like periodically reversing? Uranus's moons are relatively small, and the total mass of all 27 moons is only equivalent to 16% of our moon's mass. Ha. Huh. See, Jupiter and Saturn's moons, they were like, they were making us look bad. This guy's moons, nothing to worry about. We, we, we are still in charge. Atmosphere is 83% hydrogen, 15% helium, 2% methane. Topmost layer of clouds is made of methane, possibly hiding colorful clouds underneath. 13 known rings, all very faint. So I think I can see most of them here. There's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, 
I can see most of the rings. Rings are dusty, made of an unknown dark material. Wait, we literally have no idea what these are made of. They could be any material. Somebody needs to go write like a science fiction novel in which like Uranus's rings turn out to be made out of like some kind of super important magic energy source or something. That would be awesome. All right, let's keep going. Are we gonna visit your moons? At least some of them? Where are we going? Are we going down? Why are we going down? Oh, Uranus is sideways. That's right. So your moons are sideways. Miranda, you're a tiny little moon. Uranus's moons are not yet well mapped. This is all we know about them. Miranda, lots of broken terrain. Ariel, lots of cut grooves forming polygons. I see. I think some of those polygons are actually texture artifacts, but that's fine. There's little Miranda. Miranda is so cute. I feel like, like Miranda is small enough I could stick it in my book bag and carry it around on my back. That's how, that's how small it looks. And it's not going to tell me anything more about them because we don't know that much about Uranus's moons. Here comes Umbriel and Titania. I'm going to be saying these all wrong. I'm so sorry, astronomy people, for butchering your names. Umbriel, the darkest Uranian moon. It is pretty dark looking. I have the feeling like the like draft just wasn't able to get high resolution textures or complete textures of some of these moons because we know so little about them and we don't really have like we don't really have spacecraft going out to Uranus's moons. We need to visit them more. These guys needs lo need love, seriously. Titania, the largest Uranian moon. You are in fact slightly larger than Oberon, but you guys are about the same size has large canyons. Oberon has a mountain 2.5 times Mount Ever Everest's height. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right, Titania and Oberon, you guys hang out. I'm going to go on to the next planet. Let's move. I am losing track of my orientation here. Oh, look at this. Uranus is still pretty big. I feel like Uranus is like a three-story building. Uh, hey, Neptune, I recognize you. Neptune, the last planet. Neptune, ice giant number two. Distance from sun, 30 AU. The most distant planet from the sun is 30 times farther away than Earth. Volume, 57 plus Earths and 14 known moons. So we're starting to get our moon count down now. Has very active weather the highest wind speeds in the solar system that's 2100 kilometers an hour that that's like a category 30 hurricane that's super super fast winds okay no more information about that information's blocked out all right let's keep going are we going to visit your moon your moon neptune look at it you're you're a cold gas giant all right here's triton hey triton Triton, Neptune's largest moon by far, captured by Neptune from the Kuiper belt as Neptune migrated outward. Frozen nitrogen surfaces and nitrogen geysers. So I guess Neptune was all like just swinging out towards the edge of the solar system and on its way it was like, I'll take that because I want to have a big moon just like all the other planets. So here's Triton. It's a reasonable size. It looks about the size of our moon actually, except it has nitrogen for its surface. All made out of frozen frozen nitrogen. How cold are you? Gotta get pretty cold out here in this part of the solar system for nitrogen to be frozen and forming the entire surface of a planet. Or a moon, rather. Alright, let's keep going. Alright, we're done with the planets. Where are we going now? What's this? Eris. Pluto! Pluto. Everybody likes Pluto. And you can see all of Pluto's little moons. So a lot of people think Pluto only has one moon, Charon, and that they orbit around each other, which is, they, they do orbit around each other. They orbit around their mutual center of gravity, which is pretty cool. 
But they, Pluto actually has a bunch of other moons. You can see them there. Hydra and Styx. I think they were just recently named, actually. And what's that other one? Kerberos? Nyx? Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I think they're going with an underworld theme for those. Makes a lot of sense. And over here is another dwarf planet, Eris. About the same size as Pluto, actually. Has its own moon, Dysnomia. Not as big as Sharon. Or Sharon. Can't remember how to say that. Two of our four outer dwarf planets are shown here. So this is just two of them. We're not even going to see the other two. Pluto and its largest moon, Sharon, orbit around each other. And we're sending out a new probe to get a look at Pluto in 2015. It'll be our first real look at Pluto. I think we've only looked at Pluto with telescopes before. That's why this texture is so low resolution. Look at that. Sharon is like a blur. And there's little Nyx and Hydra. Little tiny Kerberos. I think it's even smaller than Deimos. They're so tiny. All right. Eris, the most massive dwarf planet in the solar system. One-fourth the mass of Earth. You are a big dwarf planet. Are you bigger than Mercury? I don't think you are. I can't remember the rules for planets versus dwarf planets. Something about clearing their orbit is a little bit arbitrary. Orbits around the sun once every 560 years and has one moon named Dysnomia. So it has it has a very long year. Once so in a millennium, it goes around the sun twice. Pluto. Pluto has at least five moons. Sharon, or Sharon, is officially Pluto's largest moon by far, but Pluto and Sharon might at some point be classified as a binary dwarf planet. That makes sense, because, I mean, Sharon's so big, and they're orbiting around a point between them. At that point, it's hard to really say that either one is the planet, really. They're, they're more like a couple. All right. Let's keep going. What comes after this? It's the end of the solar system. There's nowhere to go. Bye, dwarf planets. Oh, we're getting a big view. Oh, the sun. How could I forget the sun? Soul, I wouldn't forget you. So big. So big. Look at how big this is. There goes the asteroid belt. And you, you, make, you make Jupiter look small. This is ridiculous. Look at that. There's Jupiter just dwarfed by that enormous sun. The sun is so big. I feel like like all the planets could just drop into the sun and the sun would just shrug and be like, eh, what was that? Sun, our own star, volume 1.3 million Earths, 4.6 billion years old, and a power output of 100 billion hydrogen bombs per second. That's, that's a lot. I'm glad that that is mostly radiating out into space and not being all directly aimed at our planet. That would be bad. The sun rotates every 25 to 36 Earth days. Oh, that's interesting. So the sun the sun rotates on its axis once a month. That is an interesting coincidence. The inner core reaches 15 million degrees Celsius. Spectral type G2V, which means it's a yellow dwarf star. You're a little bitty star. Completes an orbit around our galaxy in 250 million years. Yeah, that makes that other planet's orbit look like nothing. Okay. So that's the sun. And now we have truly explored all everything there is to see here in the solar system. So where are we going from here? Let's find out. Shrinking space a little bit more. Space has been further shrunk down, old scale, 1 to 1 million, new scale, 1 to 50 million. The Sun and Saturn should now appear to be 50 times smaller than they did a minute ago. Oh my god, we're getting so close to it, I don't want to get this close to it. I don't like this color, I don't like the size. 